Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Bernie. I'm a concept art mentor at CG Spectrum. And today we're going to continue with the life drawings. Can someone let me know if the audio sounds pretty good today? If, uh, and if the music is too low or too loud, I'd be, I'd appreciate it. So uh, yeah, last week we did um, some figure drawings. We worked off of, uh, let's see, this pose right here. And we worked off of this pose as well. <clears throat> so we'll continue those and we'll actually take these reference or the studies that we did off of these reference and uh, create some concepts with them. Oops. Yeah, this is the one we ended with last week. And this one as well. Hey, Patrick. How, how does the audio sound? Does it, is the audio okay? Can you hear the music as well? Yeah, so for now we'll get started with some warm ups. Hey, what's going on guys? Hey, Rushback. Pretty good. I'm just, uh, it's 11 a.m. It's, I mean, it's, you know, it's quite late in the morning, but I'm still drinking coffee, trying to, you know, get going for the day. How are you guys doing? All right, cool. So uh, how's the music for everyone? I'm just curious. Is it too low? Last time it was super low. I couldn't even hear the music. All right, cool. So let's get started. Today, I'm just going to get start warming up with. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it is super early for some people, especially uh, a lot of artists, right? We usually sleep super late. That's when we can uh, really focus without any distractions, right? I know some people that sleep at you know, 6, 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> okay, you wake up at 3 p.m. All right. Yeah, that's what I used to do too. Can't anymore with a family, right? All right, yeah, sometimes I just warm up like this. I'm not really drawing anything, just curves, circles. It is the best time to work. I mean, again, no distractions. All right, cool. Let's get started with uh, some figure drawings. Are you guys drawing with me? Yeah, I got to remind myself to loosen up right now. Use my whole arm. I think we all have similar tendencies when we just get started drawing. Kind of get, we need the time to loosen up, right? Let's change this. I got to go back to shape dynamics. Oh, modeling, cool. What are you modeling, a character? Oh yeah, Patrick, you're doing some figure drawings. Awesome. Yeah, this is a uh, this whole streaming thing is making me do some studies <laughs> with you guys, which is great. Uh, oftentimes, again, uh, when you're busy working, 
you just don't make the time to do this sometimes. I mean, I used to, but recently, to be honest, I haven't been. But again, for anybody, whether you're a professional or a student, um, it's always important to be doing studies to, you know, to keep sharp. And we're always learning, of course. A Ghostbuster trap, awesome. I don't think I watched the most recent uh, Ghostbusters. I just remember when I was a kid, I watched that, the old school, the classic one. But yeah, did not watch the most recent one. <clears throat> yeah let me know if you guys have any questions while i'm doing this feel free to ask any questions i'll be happy to answer them i'm gonna redraw that one Oh yeah, you're saying the classics are great, or the classic one's great. Oh, is there a new one coming out? I didn't even know that. Okay, I'll check it out. I'll check out the uh, trailer. And your question is, how do you develop the eye for poses? Uh, let's see. So generally, you're trying to look at... Um, if you're talking about just looking at reference, Are you taking a rough pose to a character concept in the stream? Yes, I am going to do that soon. I'm just warming up right now. Um, yeah, later we'll do that very soon in a few minutes. For I for poses, so, um, you know, I think you're asking about, you know, when you don't have reference in front of you. So the best way to, um, I mean, of course, right now I'm actually looking at reference. I just can't show the reference here, uh, but uh, yeah. The best way to develop posing is just uh, practice with uh, good photos, right? It's studies again. Do gesture studies, right? The more you do, the more of a library you're going to create in your head. You're, the more you're going to understand how the, the human figure works uh, and how you can uh, just make stuff up like without having reference in front of you later, right? Uh, so that's how you develop is by doing figure studies and doing gesture uh, studies right the more you do you're just gonna it's just gonna come more naturally to you later when you're doing your own concepts and generally you know a lot of the uh, concept poses that you do for your characters they're not gonna be that different I mean you're not gonna post something like this uh, for a concept normally right it's gonna be usually a three-quarter view where you could see most of the front part of the design, right? And there's maybe gonna be a slight pose to it, nothing crazy, 
uh, nothing is really going to be foreshortened right so you want to master those uh those three quarter views that uh that most of your character drawings are really going to be at So yeah, maybe depending on what the character does, it might have some, you know, general tweaks in the pose. But uh, yeah. All right, let's do one more warm up and then get to continuing what we did last week. Hey, what's up, Shivam? Yeah, just doing some uh, gesture studies. This is gonna be our last pose for the day. And then we're gonna get to some longer poses eventually, but I'm gonna take what we did last week and turn it into a concept. Throwing a spear. All right, cool. I think that's good for the warm ups. And uh, let's go to what we were doing last week here. Let's start with this one. Hey Patrick, so uh, how do you like streaming so far? Um, no, so this is my first time or second time today uh, streaming. Last week was my first time. How do I like it? It's pretty good. I mean, I'm used to making videos, but I'm um, not streaming. So there were some uh, technical issues that I had to go through, uh, like audio wise. Uh, so that part is kind of nerve wracking because it's hard to check like, you know, what things sound like. But uh, as long as you guys say it sounds good, then I'll trust you guys. But let me know, yeah, if the audio is kind of weird or if you want the music a little bit higher, uh, let me know. And I could adjust that for you guys and see if you guys like it or not. Have you got, have you streamed before? Has anyone streamed before here? All right, so let's take a look at uh, the progress again. So we started with the line, or we blocked this in, huh? Or no, actually we started with the line drawing. Yeah, a sketch like that. That's what we started with, a quick sketch. And then we cleaned up our sketch and then we blocked it in. And then we did a light pass. Cleaned up the silhouette a little bit there. Made some adjustments. <clears throat> cool. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to grab this. Flatten it all out. Whoops. And I'm gonna add color to this. The way I'm gonna do it here is I'm just gonna colorize the whole thing. Just click that checkbox. 
and I'm just gonna make some minor adjustments to get it close to the base color that I want. For this guy, I think I'm gonna turn him into a demon gargoyle type thing. Let's try that. Here I'm in levels. I'm gonna adjust the, uh, the values real quick here. And I tend to work from dark to light. I like things a little bit darker. And um, yeah, just I just have I just feel like I have more of a, a value range to work with if it's a little darker. Base the base. Let's start. Let's do work with someone like that. Okay, what have you? Uh, oh, you do Destiny Two speedruns? Awesome. Yeah, I know a couple of people who uh, stream uh, playing games. Uh, I hear, yeah, I hear it's a fun thing. What do you uh, stream, Patrick? All right, so from here, let's use this as a base to uh, do our gargoyle. I'm actually gonna have to shrink this guy down quite a bit. Let me just do that real quick. Let's get the image. Yeah, let's just shrink this guy down. Scale him down. So we got room to put in his wings and things like that. Yeah, so I often see students when they're uh, doing concepts or drawings, they won't, for some reason, they they will not um, increase their canvas size. And they'll work all the way up to the edge, you know what I mean? And then their design is dictated by the size of their canvas, right? Don't do that. You always want to scale down your image or scale up the canvas so that you have enough room to work with. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm creating some more room for myself so that I'm not restricted to the canvas size. Oh, you do art streams too, Patrick? Cool. Oh, my canvas size right now is just uh, 300 D uh, resolution, 10 by 10, I believe. I'm just choosing a random size right now. It's a square. Just making sure it's there's enough pixels so it's not blurry. That's really all it is. Anyways, let's get this going. So. First, I'm gonna do sketches on top of my base right here. I'm just gonna sketch loosely. Once again, just like we do warm-ups with figure drawings, right? Um, you don't wanna get too uptight at this point. You wanna stay very loose because you're exploring, you're brainstorming, right? And, uh, you know, of course you can do that with thumbnails when you do concepts, but in this case, uh, for these this particular study, I'm just gonna do variations on top of my base here. Okay, and again, there's obviously multiple ways of doing it. One way is just simply drawing on top, obviously. And the other way is to block things in, right? And we'll try both. It'll make his jaw a little bigger. Get some bigger ears in there. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, it's good to zoom out just to see the overall design of it so that you don't get um, tunnel vision right. You're seeing the overall composition and the overall silhouette. And we'll have him sitting on some kind of a ledge, maybe like a rooftop ledge. That would be kind of cool. And here I'm not using reference for my uh, concepting here. But, you know, definitely for you guys, you, you should be using it whenever uh, you need to. I'm just not using it because of uh, time -ish, time limits here. And uh, this is just more of a uh, study sketch, right? But if you're really doing this for work or you want to do it for your portfolio, you want the best results possible, uh, you should be using reference. So really, I would be using reference for everything, the wings, the horns, the architecture, right? Hey, Patrick, so in a studio environment, what is the time frame they give you for delivering a concept idea? Oh, that really depends. Uh, it depends on the studio you work for. It depends on the... Uh, the... Uh, game you're working on, type of game, like if it's a mobile game or, you know, a larger game like, uh, let's say, League of Legends or something like that. But um, generally, I could say, and I could say about maybe a week for a character. So you'll spend like a uh, two, three days on the initial uh, sketch pass where you do at least three variations. And then you'll do, you know, spend two, three days on uh, rendering it after they choose a direction. And it, again, it could be uh, sh less time or more time depending on the type of character you're working on. If it's like a, obviously like a, um, the main character, it could go on for months. They could give you like three months to work on a main character. Uh, if it's like a, uh, yeah, important character, you could spend a couple weeks on it. If it's a general NPC character, you know, maybe about a week, yeah. And should a student try to follow the same time frame for concepts? Uh, generally, you always want to push yourself, you know, time-wise. How much time you spend on something uh, do you, should you f put that much pressure on yourself as a student developing a portfolio no I would say no uh, give yourself you know several more days than a professional would uh, really for you the most important thing as a student would be to take your time to learn things correctly use the right processes and um, explore I would say as a student, you really want to take the time to explore different things. Uh, again, use reference, take your time. And the end result is most, more important, I would say. Uh, because when someone's looking at your portfolio, they're not, they don't know how long you spent on it, right? And if someone asks you, asks you, you give, you say a week, <laughs> even if it took you two months to work on it, just say a week. Yeah. All right, cool, let's try blocking it in this time. So yeah, as a student, just uh, focus on the end result for what your image looks like in uh, your portfolio. Don't worry about the time. But um, to get more efficient with time, th this is why we're doing this stuff. This is why we do the studies, right? Doing the studies is what's gonna make you faster at doing concepts. Yeah, he is evolving into Illidan, right? That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> but I mean, you know, he's a gargoyle. But yeah, whatever, yeah. Maybe we'll make him look like some type of Illidan. Yeah. 
we'll try another quick pass and this time we're gonna block it in maybe we'll do something completely different then let's see let's see any ideas what do you guys want me to try yeah so when I look at reference like this I'm trying to imagine in my head real quick even before I draw it sometimes um, just going through different ideas in my head, visualizing it in my head, what possibilities there are. And again, if you're stuck, you just start drawing <clears throat> and see what comes up. <clears throat> but yeah, there's a lot of uh, not so great ideas in my head as well. So I just I just eliminate those before I uh, I don't even spend the time to draw those, of course. <clears throat> How do I set up my layers? Uh, well, that's really uh, everyone sets up their layers differently. Uh, I'm not really setting any my layers up too well right now. I'm just grouping them by uh, the character kind of but it's quite messy right now just because it's a study but in general i'll keep my line drawing separate <clears throat> and i'll keep all my major values separate just so i can adjust them later yeah so keeping your layers separate is a good thing uh the keyboard command that creates a straight line along the ruler yeah, so if, you, if you're on brush, you just hold shift. You make, you make a dot there and hold shift. If you want to go diagonal, you got to turn everything off here and then make a dot and then hold shift. It'll do that. It'll go wherever you want it to. Make a point and hold shift, but you got to turn everything off or else it'll look like this. You can barely see it. There's a gradient to your line. Took a lunch break to make a 10 page portfolio. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> All right, so um, let's just quickly uh, go along with this one. I'm just gonna do whatever comes to mind at this point. Just to show you an example again of how you could quickly block something in without even drawing right you're just blocking it in and sometimes it's easier to see shapes that way or yeah just quickly block blocking things in right i don't know he's rooster man let's make him into rooster man actually i've been working on a building a chicken coop these days in my backyard so <laughs> <laughs> it's much harder than I thought. I thought it'd be super easy. I thought I could finish it in over the weekend, but I barely got half of it done. <laughs> you guys, rooster man. <clears throat> oh yeah, their tails look like this, right? Yeah, I know this is silly, guys. I'm just doing it. We'll go with the gargoyle. We won't go with Rooster Man. Let's get rid of these. He doesn't need uh, horns on his shoulder. He needs some feathers. Let's have some feathers coming out of his uh, elbow area. Yeah, so after you block it in like that, then you could kind of refine the shapes a little bit and you could draw it in just so you, for yourself so you could see all the details. And add some of the texture here for the feathers.
Oh, I forgot his beak. <laughs> Harpy combination, yeah. I'm just adding in his textures for his, his rooster legs. Anyways, cool. So, you know, this is silly, but just giving you an idea of how to approach um, just exploring, right, quickly without spending too much time on it. So, again, we look at rooster men and we're like, nope. I don't want to work on this guy. This is not great. So we didn't spend too much time on him. We're just going to get rid of him. Bye-bye, Rooster Man. And we'll just go with the uh, gargoyle idea. <clears throat> and again, we're going to just keep things loose here. For these kind of studies, again, <clears throat> again, don't get too uptight. Uh, we could make changes later on. And again, I'm talking to myself too. <laughs> we we we're gonna we can make changes later on. Let's move forward with this. I think a lot of times we do get hung up on trying to perfect one image when we really gotta go through many many studies and many uh, images to come up with something that we like, right? And so after you do maybe, let's say, five of these in studies, right, concept studies, you can choose maybe one or two that are worth putting in your portfolio, right? I think that's a better approach than uh, choosing one image like this, for example, and saying, this is it, I have to perfect this, this is the one that's going to go in my portfolio. Hey, Benjamin, someone's, you're saying someone told me that a 3D artist at Blizzard you have to create your own concepts. Is that true? It might have been true a long time ago. I don't know if that's true anymore. I doubt that's true right now. But um, as I know that a lot of the 3D artists at Blizzard are super talented. So um, they will, they're good at drawing too. They're do it, good, pretty good at doing concepts as well. A lot of them are. So um, maybe some of them are making adjustments to the concepts. Um, adding to them, right? That's possible. <clears throat> All right, cool. So let's go with this and let's block it in again. I'm going to use the same exact color and value as my gargoyle. Once again, it's supposed to look like stone. So I'm going to keep it all the same. And if you need to make any adjustments at this point, that's what I would do. But for now, I'm just going to block everything in without even thinking. Hand painting and drawing can be combined pretty well, right? Uh, what do you mean by hand painting? You mean like painting and drawing is the same thing? If that's what you mean, yeah, it is really the same thing. It's just that with painting, you're drawing with a super thick, large tool, right? That's really the difference. Let me actually move this over and put it on a multiply. Whoa! What happened there? I gotta make a new layer under that. Make this a multiply. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> Texturing the meshes like World of Warcraft is hand painted from what I know. Oh yeah, it is. I, I believe it is hand painted. Yeah. That's how they get their uh, unique look, right? Yeah, I, I believe it is. Uh, in the cinematics, uh, for cinematics, characters are 3D modeling. It's probably a different story. They are using textures or painting over textures, right? But if you're talking about in-game assets, yeah, a lot of them are probably, or most of them are heavily hand-painted. So obviously with the more realistic uh, art styles, you will see more of the photo textures being used. Um, but with a more stylized look, stylized art style, you'll see less and less of that being used. Or, I mean, it's still being used, but you just can't tell because they're really painting over the uh, reference, right? Or the textures, the photo textures or they're just using it very minimally. Hey, no problem, Benjamin. Any questions, really, anything, I'd be happy to answer them. This is time, this is time is for you guys, for you to ask anything you want. And try to mess me up by distracting me. <laughs> it, so that's the challenging thing, actually, about uh, um, painting or drawing while I'm streaming is I'm not used to like reading comments right and trying to focus, refocus at my, on my painting right. That's not something I'm used to yet. So I keep losing my focus. Uh, that's what I do notice when I'm uh, streaming right now. Cause I gotta read the comments and then, um, yeah, it's, I have to refocus every time. But yeah, it's your job, your guys' job to try to distract me as much as possible. <laughs> hey Olsen, thanks for your comment. Yeah. How do you know Olsen? Are you uh do you know people from Blizzard? Or do you work at Blizzard? <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna adjust this wing. Uh, the negative space there is a little too large for my liking, so I'm just going to grab the whole thing, uh, copy it, paste it down. Oops, I was on the wrong layer. Got to make sure I'm on the top one. I'm using the warp tool here. It's something I use quite often to just make quick adjustments. So let's do that. And again, if this was a like real work assignment or like an illustration, you wouldn't do what I'm doing there because um, your all your layers would get messed up. But since this is just a study, it's fine. The other thing I'm not liking about this as I zoom out and check it out is how the wings are kind of looking symmetrical to each other and I don't want them to look symmetrical. Let me go back to the other one. 
what I'm going to try to do first is bring this left wing out more, see if that makes it look more interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to grab the whole thing and move it down to create a little bit more room up there. I'm actually going to scale it down again too so I don't get into that trap of uh, being limited to the size of my canvas. And once again, I'm going to grab that entire wing and shift it around, see what I like better. Yeah, I think I like that better. Let's go with that. Yeah, as, and as you can see, um, don't ever feel like you have to commit to something uh, right off the bat at this stage. You can see how I'm very open to making any changes that I want. And you guys should feel the same way when you're doing things like this. Again, because it's the studies for you, yourself, you could do whatever you want. And again, at this stage, we're really focused on the overall look. So that's why I'm looking at, I'm zooming out and looking at the uh, overall shapes and the composition and the balance of things, right? So I'm gonna lower that wing on the tip and make this wing on the right side higher. That looks more interesting. And you want to avoid uh, verticals. Well, when it comes to uh, this type of character design, you don't want this wing part to look like it's straight up and down like that. That looks odd and it brings a lot of attention to itself. And you want to also avoid any like horizontals in the figure. Here, of course, this is fine because this is man-made uh, where he's sitting on. But uh, any for real straight horizontals, like for example, if I was designing this wing and I did something like that, that would draw a lot of attention to itself. At the same time, you could use horizontals and verticals to intentionally draw, you know, bring attention to a certain part of your uh, concept or, or uh, composition. That's another useful tool that you can do, but you want to make sure it's intentional. Since I pulled this wing out, I'm going to cut into the this area of the wing so that it looks like it's getting stretched out a bit more. And also, I'm not concerned with the super detail, like the detailed silhouette that I'm going to add later on. So at this point, I'm not concerned about it. I'm ignoring the details that I want to eventually add. All right, cool. So let's let's say this is cool. This looks better than it did before. See how that kind of looks squashed in there? Like it looks a little squashed in, right? A little too vertical, right? Straight up and down. But by doing this, it kind of opens it up. Oh, so Olsen, your friends worked there in the past? Cool. Hey, Sir Ninja. So uh, you applied to the school. How long does it usually take to get a response? Should be very soon. Benjamin. Not long for me, it was max a day. Currently in week three and I love it. Awesome.
Hey, uh, Forbes, you're trying to decide whether to pursue concept art as a career. Do you have any advice on how to be certain if it is a good fit? <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball, even though I wish I did. Um, can you be sure? I don't know if you can ever be sure of anything, right? Um, <laughs> at the same time, um, I know what you're asking. Sorry if I'm kind of... Um, going around beating around the bush to answer your question but um i think knowing yourself what you like what you don't like is really important when deciding anything right but in this case obviously with concept art you need to be aware of what you like and what you don't like as an artist so for me i could just share with you what I, how i decided to be a concept artist uh, my major was uh, illustration uh, in college. At the time, they actually didn't have any entertainment design major or concept art major. So my major was illustration. And, you know, I realized later or quickly that I didn't like just being stuck on one image for too long. I get bored very easily. And I just love the... Uh, ideation process just coming up with different ideas the whole creative process of generating ideas i i really like that aspect of it so that was one reason and I, obviously with concept art you're doing a lot of variations a lot of sketching a lot of uh thumbnails things like that a lot of using your imagination um, problem solving that's a huge part of it problem solving for your client or yeah for the project so if you like doing things like that it's good to to do concept art if you want to be just told what to do like oh give me the reference you know just tell me what it's supposed to look like tell me what you want so i can draw it if you think more like that then concept art is not for you because uh, they want you to figure out what they want. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They don't know what they want yet, meaning the client or um, the uh, project uh, team lead, right? They want you to do something cool. They want you to read their mind and to some degree, right? They'll give you some reference, they'll give you some pointers, and then they want you to figure it out for them. That's your job. So if that sounds stressful to you, then concept art is probably not for you. If that sounds like a challenge to you, where you're like, oh yeah, I know I could do something really cool. Uh, I'll, I'll show something even cooler than what you expect, right? I'll make something even cooler than what you think you want. If that sounds like a challenge, then yeah, concept art could be for you. At the same time, you do have to follow guidelines, obviously. It depends on the project. For the most part, uh, you are going to have to follow some guidelines. So just keep that in mind as well. You can't just do whatever you want. Uh, it depends, but yeah. Most of the times you don't, you can't do whatever you want. Follow some loose guidelines is what usually is the case. And I'm mixing, or I'm making some changes here, adjusting some things, adding a few details here and there. And I know this is fairly generic, uh, but let's, you know, you could actually start with something generic and make it more unique later on. Uh, I think sometimes uh, students or people in general, artists in general, overthink things. They think some, the idea has to be super unique from the beginning to make the visuals unique, but that's not really true. You can make a simple idea, uh, very interesting and detailed and unique um, by making some adjustments later on. Uh, usually what I find is that, yeah, again, uh, students overthink things and make things way too complicated. And it's so hard to read anything when they make everything so busy. 
And yeah, we'll get to that. So here you can see um, my concept is very simple so far. It's just a gargoyle, a dude with wings, some large toenails, <laughs> and some horns on his head. But you'll see uh, what it develops into later on. And again, if this is all you want to do, as far as you want to take it concept-wise, that's fine too. But we'll try to push it as we move along. And yeah, as a concept artist, you're gonna you're gonna have to have the ability to push things, push and pull things, right? If it's too much, you have to pull back and bring it back to um, something more believable. If it's too goofy, too silly, too wacky, then you gotta pull back, right? But sometimes you need to know how to really push it push the design, push the concept, push the ideas, take it as far as you can proportionally, play with it more, right? And that's something that some people have a hard time doing. So again, being able to do both is very important. Hey, no problem, uh, Forbes. Hey, Patrick. So yeah, the course with Brian, he worked, yeah. Brian's my friend. I worked with him for over 10 years. We worked together um, at Blizzard as well. Oh, yeah, only six, oh, six months? Okay, cool. I guess you just took the uh, intro course with him, right? Awesome. Yeah, he's a great artist. And a cool guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually went to the same college, to Art Center in Pasadena. And, and uh, we met each other at Blizzard um, as well. I was hired uh, probably a couple months after he was hired at Blizzard. And we worked right next to each other. <laughs> Those were some good times. <laughs> We were both uh, pretty young back then. It was a uh, very fun, fun working experience. We played a uh, World of Warcraft together, basically every every day after work, or during at lunchtime or something like that. <laughs> hey, Laura. Awesome, man! Everyone's complimenting Brian here, huh? This is the Brian stream, Brian. Uh. Complimenting stream. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, I mean, he's good. I'll let him know that you guys are saying all this good stuff about him. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's cool to see, um, you know, for you guys to I hope you guys are like taking advantage of Slack and really going in there and posting your work uh, to get feedback from other uh, mentors. Because again, every men every artist, every professional artist has like a different perspective, right? Uh, and a different method of doing things, a different way of thinking, right? Uh, so it's great to get like different viewpoints. Um, so take advantage of that. Yeah, like what Brian, what I think and my approach to things will be different from what Brian thinks, right? And you could learn from, you know, all the different mentors that are available to you here. <clears throat> and a lot of things will, will you know, have common uh, advice that we give you. And then you'll be able to see, you know, if you question some of our advice, you're like, huh, I don't know about that, you know? And I know students do that. They're like, I don't know if th what this guy is saying is true or not. But uh, you could confirm things with other mentors, right? If we're all saying the same thing, then most likely it's true. Right? Here I'm just uh, accenting my, um, my shadows or just the darker areas. going back in there just to create some structure 
And to be honest, it's quite challenging to stay focused right now. Uh, I'd rather actually just sit here and answer questions. Uh, to, do, to try to do both is quite distracting. But I'm doing my best. Oh, you'll send him the clip. Okay. Then send him this. Brian sucks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, he's uh, he's uh, one of my uh, good friends from working with him. Again, I've worked with him for over 10 years now. And uh, yeah, most of the times I think we sat very close to each other, like right next to each other, I think at Blizzard for the most part. Yeah, that's the other fun thing about um <clears throat> working at a um working at a studio where you get to sit next to a bunch of different artists it's it's again super cool just to see different perspectives diff how someone will tackle the same concept right and see things differently yeah it was super cool when we got the same assignment and everyone would uh take a stab at the same concept so for example uh with diablo 3 uh, when we were trying to come up with the design for Diablo 3, the uh, female Diablo, we, a bunch of artists at Blizzard, uh, I think about, man, it must have been a, around eight or ten concept artists working on it at the same time. And, you know, we would get together uh, once a week to check out what everyone was doing. And it was so awesome to see, uh, you know, what everyone came up with. Again, just seeing everyone's different perspectives on an approach to uh, the same uh, description, right? <clears throat> and you, again, learn from each other uh, and you get, you inspire each other. It's just a very uh, cool experience. I'm going to kind of exa exaggerate his facial features a little bit more. <laughs> hey, Patrick. Yeah, uh, he'll probably say um, I suck too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hey, Laura, so... You wish you had gone into concept art earlier. You started in costume design and now you're trying to make the transition. What do you think about starting out when you're a little older? Well, uh, what I can say is that I've seen a lot of people who, uh, you know, tried or were trying to get into art in general or concept art uh, later in life. And uh, is it more challenging? Probably it probably is because either you have a you know, you already have a family or You're just busy working. So you're trying to uh, study part-time things like that, right? Is it impossible? Of course not. Nothing's impossible um, It's really a your willingness um, Like how much time and sacrifice you're gonna put into it, right? It's all about putting in the time you need to put in the time to do the work to do these studies, right? If you don't put the time in, you're not going to get better. Um, so it's all about how much time you're willing to put in or that you can put in. Uh, that's what I would generally say. Yeah. But you do have some uh, stiff competition coming up there's a, a lot of young guys that are you know working super hard and they started earlier that's the reality of it but at the same time again it's all about your willingness how much time you're willing to put into the to art and doing your studies 
and a program like this <clears throat> that they offer at uh, CG Spectrum, <clears throat> where you work with a mentor, it will speed up your progress, of course. Because you can cut out all the uh, unnecessary stuff that you would be learning at in college, right? Um, and you just focus on what you need to, to uh, improve your portfolio. And of course you get those uh, insider tips, right? From professionals. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, it's your portfolio. But so they will help you to work smarter, you know, more efficiently, where you don't waste time doing stuff that maybe some other people are doing, right? It helps you to focus, to save some time to work smarter. Well, I'm really distracted, to be honest, guys. I'm like going super slow right now. But as long as you guys are cool with it, I'm, I'm just trying to help you guys out and answer your questions. And again, I'd rather be doing that actually. So if you guys are cool with that. And here I'm just trying to strengthen the silhouette of the lower jaw mouth area. Hey Patrick, so you said, I guess the how to get into the industry is the hardest part at least, that's what I think. Oh yeah, getting your foot in the door is the most challenging part. Once you do get your foot in the door, you get your first job, um, things become a lot, lot easier. Obviously it's because you're connecting, you're connecting with a bunch of artists in the industry through that experience. So things become a lot easier. And of course, um, you have experience now. And a lot of the times, um, companies will avoid hiring entry level artists just because they don't want to spend the time to babysit, right? <laughs> but at the same time, there's plenty of other companies that are actually looking for um, entry level artists. So it really depends. Uh, so what I recommend to uh, most students is that they look for uh, freelance opportunities first. I mean, of course, look for every opportunity, but um, try to get a freelance gig if you can't get a full-time gig, right? So that you could develop your resume, experience, and uh, portfolio. That's what I had to do, basically, but... That didn't even last long. I probably did some freelance gigs for um, maybe three months before I got uh, my first job. <clears throat> All this stuff in the around the mouth actually doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that for now, though. I think I'm going to exaggerate the shape of this nose as well. I'm purposely not looking at the stream right now, or the uh, chat so I can focus a little bit. <laughs> so wait give me a second but again feel free i want you guys to ask a ton of questions i like it
yeah and you guys uh definitely use social media that's something that's something you know we i didn't have uh when i was trying to you know get a job use it it's a great tool to market yourself definitely do that all sorts of uh, social media use that make videos anything that you can do you know you don't have to work for a game company right you could do your own thing as you know you guys probably know a lot of uh youtube artists guys that um, are doing well on their own don't limit yourself to what opportunities are out there uh, these days there's just so many so much opportunity for artists in general right so put yourself out there and that's something i definitely want to uh, do more of in the future i just got to make the time to do it uh, but yeah it's it's a great tool right now for artists All right, let's look at the chat. Okay. Hey, Shakar from India. Hi. I've never been to India. My dad's been to India, but it looks like there's super cool stuff in India. I, I watched some uh, YouTube videos uh, <laughs> where uh, they're talking or showing uh, different ancient sites in India. I thought those, those were super cool. And uh, the music, Patrick, is Harris Heller. It's spelled H A. I'll just type it in real quick. Yeah, when I'm working, uh, on art, some a lot most of the times it's better for me to not listen to anything that has lyrics in it. I don't know why I get. I think I get distracted again. Uh, just listening to thing with beats without any lyrics helps me focus. I'm using a uh, Spotify, by the way. Patrick, you're asking if I have a game, movie, or studio you would love to work with, like your dream workplace. Um, dream workplace in the past was Blizzard. It was awesome. And then um, for now, it would more than a studio, I think. Um, it would probably be a project. Like, uh, so two two options for me: either a zombie game, or <laughs> a uh, monster creature game right where i get to design just creatures and monsters and things like that uh, that would be cool uh hi vanessa how do you think coming from a different background such as marketing can be a benefit can be beneficial if you're starting out later for later for an employer I don't really understand your question, uh, Vanessa. Can you uh, rewrite that? So you want to do concept art, Vanessa? Is that what you're saying? But your background is marketing? And how can that uh, benefit you? Is that what you're asking? Uh, a uh, V Q W E A S D. Oh, what the? Sorry, I'm just reading through stuff. Get out of here, <laughs> a a Forbes. Uh, does location make a big difference? Uh, California versus Oklahoma. Uh, I mean, I guess in some ways it can. If you want to work on site, sure. Most of the game companies are out in uh, California, right? Uh, there's a lot in Texas. There's a lot in, uh, I guess, Seattle area. Um, a few in Chicago. Yeah, but most of them are in California, I, I would think. Uh, but these days, you know, more companies are switching to remote, remote, right? So that's a great thing, um, you know, that could work out for you, for people who want to work remotely. So yeah, things are changing. There's more remote work possibilities. Yeah. 
But I mean, you don't have to move out here. I mean, I wouldn't recommend you move out here for to try to help yourself get a job. You want to move out here only after you land a job. Most companies will relocate you, right? They'll pay for all that relocation. So don't move out here uh, before you land a job. That doesn't make any sense to do. All right, the perspective on those horns look awful. They don't line up to each other. I'm going to try shifting this out. That looks a little better. A, you're wondering if you can get a qualification at the end of an introduction course at CG. I don't know. I don't know if you can. I'm not sure. That's something you got to email them about and ask them. Uh, so email someone there, maybe uh, email Amanda or someone else. I'm not sure uh, wh which emails are available for you to contact, but yeah, just contact someone at uh, CG Spectrum and ask them just to make sure. I don't want to say anything that's not true here right? <laughs> or accurate. So yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Vanessa. Okay, cool. Uh, so Yeah, so for um, marketing. Oh yeah, so there's marketing art. You could work for a marketing art department, right, at a game company. That's something that you can do. Let's see. Hey, by the way, guys, uh, real quick. <laughs> Does my uh, screen in Photoshop look squashed to you guys? I'm looking at the screen on my other uh, computer and it looks squashed, like, like this way, right? Does it look squashed? I gotta fix that. Something's wrong with that. Oh, so uh, Patrick is saying you do get a certificate. I just wasn't sure if you got one for the intro course. I know for the diploma you do, but uh, for the intro co course, I was not 100% sure. And yeah, again, uh, Vanessa for marketing, uh, yeah, there is a there are some uh, larger game companies have do marketing art departments, so that may be uh, beneficial for you since you have a background in marketing. All right, let's keep go let's keep going with this. Now, at this point, I noodled with all the little details in the head. Uh, I'm gonna try to. Look at the bigger picture now and add in some shadows or darker shadows. I'm going to look at the overall lighting and I'm going to decide on my light source direction. Hmm, so many choices, right? I'm generally going to try it like this. I might change the lighting a little bit as I go because I want to make interesting shapes with my uh, shadows. So I'm just going to play around with it for now. Again, use a large brush when you're doing this so you don't get caught up in the details. If you're trying to look at, again, the overall lighting situation.
And again, please feel free to throw in your uh, questions right now while I'm focused on this and I'll take a look soon. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about the texture of the wing a little bit as well. Trying to decide what kind of texture I want to give it. And all this stuff, again, comes with uh, doing studies. I've studied, you know, bat wings and things like that. I drew Illidan when I was at Blizzard, or at least the, um, the version for the uh, cinematics. So um, that's why I've done this in the past. That's something similar, right? That's why it's a little easier for me to approach this design. If it was my first time drawing wings, you know, I really have to slow down and study the wings before I start painting like this. It's not like I'm a genius and I could just do this, right? <laughs> Sometimes uh, certain artists make it look easy, right? And I guess certain artists are geniuses. There are geniuses out there. Like, uh, yeah, but most of us aren't. So we got to put in the work, right? Maybe Brian's a genius. <laughs> All right, let's take a little break from drawing and look, answer some questions. Oh yeah, so it is kind of squashed, right? Yeah, I gotta figure that out. I'll try to figure that out for uh, next week. Let me put it on a different monitor and check it out. Yeah, it looks squashed. Thanks, Patrick. So uh, your question is, how do you generate ideas? I'm doing fine with rendering and if I have reference, but coming up with something new is pretty hard for me. Do you have any tips on how to generate good ideas? Again, uh, one of the ways I'm doing it is right now. Uh, using reference and painting over it, right? Getting ideas that way. And yeah, currently um, I can't use random reference that I find on Google for uh, copyright issues, right? Or license issues. So I'm not able to do that in the stream, but if you're working on your own, uh, you know, I would be get, gathering a bunch of reference and looking at it as I'm designing this, right? That's one way. Uh, another way is... Uh, really, the best thing you can do is just do studies, like I said. Paint everything. But again, you can't... You don't have the time to paint everything, right? So, what what I suggest students to do is whenever you're doing a concept, like your own concept. So for example, I'll use this as an example. Again, the gargoyle, you gather, this is the time to do studies. So here I'll be like, okay, what does stone look like? And I'll get a reference of a uh, gargoyle or, you know, architecture that looks similar to this and put it on the side. And then I'll look for uh, what wings look like, bat wings, right? I'll get reference for that. What do horns look like? I'll get some maybe ram's horns, right? Uh, what do, uh, I don't know. Yeah, these ears, like bat ears look like maybe. Uh, what does a figure look like? What do muscles look like, right? What does a tail look like? Maybe if I'm gonna add some texture to this. Out. So I'll get all that reference, right? And then if you need to, I would do studies on the side. So I would paint, do a study and do a painting of the bat wing, right? And it goes on and on. And by doing the studies every time, that's how you become better and better at being able to generate ideas because you have a huge library in your head now. 
And the other way of doing it is just by looking at different books, visual books, right? I have a huge collection of books that I've collected over, you know, over a decade, maybe almost two decades now. So just collecting good books, uh, visual books, um, or just collecting stuff online now, you know, Pinterest, um, looking at a lot of different visuals uh, that will help you just by looking at it and studying it visually will help you as well. Um, and uh, brainstorming, brainstorming, your ability to generate ideas is developed just like anything, right? So doodle, doodling, you know, whenever you get a chance, playing with different shapes, just again, not even worrying about the way it looks, right? Uh, that's something separate, like trying to control the way you draw, but that just brainstorming in your sketchbook. Uh, I used to have a sketchbook that was simply for brainstorming ideas so that I didn't have to worry about doing pretty drawings, right? I would just put all my ideas in it. As long as I could tell what's going on, that's all that mattered. It didn't have to look pretty, right? So yeah, I would just sketch all my ideas in it. I would write notes as well. And getting in the habit of just non-stop thinking, non-stop brainstorming in your head, non-stop like imagining things, right? All the different possibilities uh, visually. That's what you want to train yourself to do. And again, uh, by looking at reference, sometimes we get inspired. We see something that maybe someone else doesn't see, right? And then we use that to our advantage. Oh, he did a lot of character design in just an hour. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe we'll do that in the future. Uh, this is more about um, this session, this streaming session, at least from what I know, it's more about uh, doing studies off of reference, uh, doing figure drawings, life drawings. Uh, later, we'll do some creature designs, like at doing some reference or paintings off of uh, animals. So we'll do some of that as well. I think they have a, a concept uh, stream as well, like where uh, Tyler, I believe, does concepts. So you could take a look at that one too. But yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we'll do some of that eventually as well. Let me noodle this a little bit more. I just want to push it a little forward before we stop for today. I'm trying to add in some textures here for the horns. Uh, for the one that Brian did, was it a stream or was it for your class? Yeah, for the one-on-one -on -one classes. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. Yeah, the one-on-one -on -one classes are great. Uh, just because, you know, obviously you get to have all the time to yourself. There's group classes as well, right? But those, um, depending on how many students there are, it depends, right? how much time or feedback time you get. It's generally much quicker and um, yeah, there's less time to do uh, detailed paint overs, right? 
So in that sense, uh, the one-on-ones are great where you get like detailed feedback and specific uh, demos and things like that. Hey, at this point, I'm going to stop with this. I'm going to move on to the uh, zombie one and get that to a certain point. And maybe we'll continue rendering it next time or we'll just leave it as is and move on to something else. But yeah, if you guys uh, want to see something different, if you guys have specific things you want to see, like, uh, like Patrick, I believe, was saying, Feel free to comment in the uh, chat. Let me know. Uh, let CG Spectrum know, you know? We wanna do what's helpful to you guys. Uh, we don't wanna be doing things that you guys have no interest in, <laughs> right? Uh, so let us know. If we get enough uh, feedback on what you guys wanna see, then obviously we're gonna make adjustments and uh, do what you guys want. All right, cool. So as you can see, I made a million different layers for no reason other than helping myself move forward without feeling like hesitant to make marks. That's how that's how I counter my tendencies. So I'm going to group all this together and move on to the other image. Oops. And this is going to be the zombie guy. Yeah, it looks horribly squashed in the image. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to cut his lower jaw off. I don't want his jaw in there. Let's bring it out a little bit. So again, we were using this as reference. And here you can see some thumbnails that we did uh, just to explore different possibilities before we decided to go this direction really the most simplest direction. Hey, Nay. How long does the concept part of a project take? Like the Diablo design concept, how long did that take before it gets handed off to the people who do the 3D model of the character? Yeah, so again, the concept art part, concept art part takes uh, a varied amount of time depending on the type of uh, company you work for and the project and the import importance of that particular concept uh, or character concept. Um, so for the Diablo design, uh, again, that one took a while. It took several weeks to uh, explore different designs on it. Um, and then once we decided on a design, uh, we spent another probably one or two weeks working on the orthographic view. So the, you know, front view, back view, side view, uh, like line drawing for uh, the 3D artist. So all in all, it probably took over a month. But before even that, um, 
they were doing explorations for uh, Diablo, and um, I don't know how long that took. <laughs> Before, yeah, so when I got started on it, it took about a month from there. So it took probably a few more weeks before that for explorations. Yeah, zombies are awesome. There's no end to all the variations you could do with zombies, so it's super fun. And it's really like helps you to play around with uh, different uh, things, right? With the figure, you could really break the rules or mess with it, twist it around, right? That's the fun thing about, I think, working with zombies. Anything goes, almost. So actually, before we go into the details of it, let's focus on the overall design. I'm probably going to uh, chop up his legs a little bit. So that like got chewed up a little. And, well, that looks weird. Expose some of his muscles over here, his heel, and his Achilles. Let's have it be a little tattered up here. And I'm gonna shift his foot so it's flipped the other way, dragging. Do I have an idol? Um, I was looking up to art-wise. Idol. Well, I liked uh, H.R. Geiger or Giger, uh, the guy who uh, designed Aliens. Yeah, I thought his stuff was awesome at the time. It was like it had a very unique look, right? Super dark looking, um, just so strange, right? So unique. Uh, and I was super inspired by uh, the alien design when I was a kid watching aliens. I was just amazed because it was so believable, right? And of course, a lot of it in the movie, you couldn't really even see the design very well because everything was so dark, uh, which was also the cool part about it, right? Um, so like, I remember, as, I think when I was in fourth or fifth grade, I was trying to design or draw out what I thought it looked like because again, I couldn't tell what it really looked like by watching the movie. 
So yeah, I started doing like creature designs from that or because of that movie. So yeah, I still have a bunch of uh, HR Geiger books. Uh, they're still pretty awesome. Here, if I don't want to draw the fingers, I just cut them off. <laughs> Sorry about the knocking. I think that's my kid who's trying to come in here. <laughs> He's like, Daddy, lunch is ready. <laughs> oh, yeah, Alien was a big influence for you, too, Patrick. Cool. Yeah, Predator, too, for sure. What do I do when I get art block? Uh, oh yeah, that's a good question. We all get art blocked, right? Or blocks in our uh, imagination or, you know, in general. Uh, many things, I try everything. Sometimes I'll read a book, sometimes I'll look at different art books that I have again. Just without any um, goal necessarily, I'm just chilling. Again, I think the I think we get art block when we're burnt out or we're stressed out. That's at least for me what happens if I'm stressed stressed, or I'm distracted, like things are other things are on my mind. Or I'm super tired, like burnt out, right? So sometimes I'll take a nap. <laughs> Or I'll just uh, lay down. Actually, I won't sleep. Um, I'll lay down and relax and I'll have my uh, sketchbook next to me sometimes. And I'll let my mind kind of go, kind of flow. I'll close my eyes and yeah, I'll, uh, that actually works very well. I'll get a ton of ideas by just relaxing and laying down. I see, I, I kind of see things visually like in my head, right? I don't know if everyone's like that. I actually know that everyone isn't like that because I thought at one point everyone was like that. But um, when I asked people, they said they weren't like that. <laughs> Where I see like a ton of visuals in my head at the same time. It's kind of like a, a Rolodex of images that I just see flipping through my head or flipping inside of my head. And it's a matter of just flipping through it and choosing one. Uh, yeah. So when I close my eyes and I relax, then images start flipping through my head. Uh, when I'm sitting in front of a computer, since I'm like focused on something, that tends to not happen as well. So that's why I take breaks and do that if I'm stuck on something. And uh, what else do I do? Hmm. Sometimes I'll just doodle on a piece of paper. Like doodling on a Cintiq or a, bo a Wacom tablet feels different to me than, uh, you know, just getting away, sitting on your sofa and doodling on a piece of paper, right? Uh, 
that sometimes gets you in the in a different mindset and that works as well sorry guys i'm going super slow on this again i feel distracted but hopefully it's okay with you guys What else? Oh, and sometimes I'll take a walk, you know, just going outside, taking a walk helps to reset your mind. And sometimes I'll watch a show, like I'll have something running on my on another screen right while I'm working. And it has to be a show that, you know, where I don't really have to you know, pay attention to the show. I could just kind of listen to it, right? That works sometimes as well. And sometimes that's distracting as well. But, uh, you know, it depends on the show. You gotta find the right show. Peter Lee said, uh, just push through it in alcohol. Yeah, that could work for some people. You just don't want to end up a uh, alcoholic, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so for sure, there are going to be times, you know, when you're working, especially right, where you have to push through it. That's part of it is learning to push through it. De definitely. That's where your discipline comes in, right? your ability to just make it happen no matter what. Like sometimes you don't have the luxury to lay down, right? You don't have the luxury to chill, right? To take a walk, to read a book, uh, whatever. You, we don't have that luxury often, right? Um, so yeah, you do have to learn to push through things for sure. Uh, I was just trying to give you guys other ideas. So if you try everything, all those ideas that I mentioned and none of it works, you just got to push through it. <laughs> that is the answer. At the end of the day, uh, you got to make it happen, right? Yeah, because to be honest, part of it can be that we're trying to find excuses, right? We all of us do that to a certain degree. Um, we're just looking for an excuse to not push through things sometimes. Um, we're looking for like an easier way sometimes right and again working smart is always good but at times there's going to be times where you don't there is no easy way yeah you just have to push through it alcohol uh i don't recommend it <laughs> but uh again i think the point is really the same is that uh, you're trying to get yourself to relax for ideas, especially to generate ideas and creativity. You're tr the point is that you're trying to get yourself to your mind to relax, right? And that's why alcohol can work if you're it makes you relax, right? So for some people, it makes them sleepy, though. <laughs> He might be half joking. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I knew Peter as well at Blizzard. Uh, he's a cool guy, obviously. Yeah. But I don't. I don't think he's joking about pushing through for sure, right? Um, yeah. He, he. You do have to learn that skill as well. I'm gonna just have some flesh hanging off of his mouth.
No, like I said, you're not just you are distracting me, but I like it. <laughs> Patrick, I want you guys to distract me. Make me struggle. Help me to develop my uh, focusing skills, right? Being able to, you know, refocus quickly. Help me to grow. <laughs> Again, that's something that I'm learning as I'm doing the streaming is that, um, yeah, I have to be able to reset and refocus quickly and I'm not good at that right now. But I'm sure with time I'll get better at it. Uh, Patrick, you said you get art block a lot when you don't understand the subject matter. If I want to do character designs, but I can't draw poses and figures from my imagination, then I block. But the next day I'll study it and learn it, and the art block is over for the most part. Yeah, don't... Again, if, if you need to look at reference, always don't shy away from reference. Always use reference. Yeah. Reference is your friend. Reference is what always elevates your work. It's going to make you better. This just straight up looks like a skull right now. So distracted, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I gotta put some uh, meat on this guy. Maybe I'll just add hair, long hair. Yep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. His face is melting. Maybe this is what we feel like sometimes when we do all nighters, right? As artists, you feel like you're just falling apart. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I remember in college, I didn't even want to eat uh, because I, I wanted more time to work on my art. So I hated the fact that I needed to eat. I love eating now, but yeah, <laughs> a little too much. But um, yeah, in college, I remember I wish I didn't have to take breaks to eat. And uh, after like several weeks of working or working on my art, I would feel like this, I guess. A zombie. some ribs in there. Riblets.
Yeah, taking breaks is important. It's all about pacing yourself and staying consistent. It's a marathon. You guys are going to be doing this for decades to come, so... Yeah, just stay consistent. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Patrick. I appreciate it. All right, the stream's almost over. Any uh, last questions? I'm gonna have his uh, intestines trailing behind him in a nice design. Woo! <laughs> Give it some form. Trash art. What's up, trash art? Thanks. Glad you liked it. I actually uh, did some trash art when I was in college where I went out to collect, look for trash and uh, made some fine art out of it. That was actually super fun. I remember going to uh, uh, where the railroads used to be, it was like an abandoned, uh, like the rail railroads weren't being used, uh, but it was still there. So I found a lot of different metal pieces that got squished by the uh, train and just a lot of debris like around the uh, train tracks. Hey, Laura. Yeah. Um, We'll see. I hope I don't end up killing all the chickens. <laughs> uh, I think I'll do okay. Yeah, hopefully they, they do all right with me. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll update you guys on that once we get the chickens. Maybe we'll have to end up doing some uh, chicken zombies. <laughs> Throwing in some quick highlights here.
Walking Dead with chicken zombies. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for coming by, uh, drawing with me. Uh, let's do this again uh, next Monday. All right, guys. Have a good day. And thanks for chatting with me, too. Again, it's fun chatting with you guys. All right. See you guys. Bye.